God uses tests to expose what's really in our hearts. To test means to put to the test in order to ascertain the nature of something, including imperfections, faults, or other qualities. James 1 verses 13 through 14 says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. A quote from W. Graham Scroggie says that, When the devil tempts, it is that the tempted may fall. But when God tests, it is that the tested may stand. Our inconsistency can cause us to be captured by the very thing he called us out of, but God in his mercy will repurpose our failures. God equips us, his people, for whatever our assignment is. Whenever we choose to walk in our own ways, we will always give something up. Hey, if you missed last week, Here's a clip of what you missed. God humbles you and I, and God tests you and I, ultimately to do us good in the end. But the problem comes in is oftentimes we don't want to wait to the end. Oftentimes we want it right now. Oftentimes we manufacture and try to get ourselves to a place because I'm tired of going through and I, what I deserve. And we deduce ourselves to go faster than what God desires for me to go. But I need to know the difference. God said, I left the nations there. I left them there because I wanted to test you. Look, I love what this brother W. Graham says. Look what he says when it comes down to temptations. He said, when the devil tempts, it is that the tempted may fall. But when God tests, it is that the tested may stand. And why does he want me to stand? Because he wants me to have the testimony that I went through what I went through, but I'm still standing. He wants me to stand because he wants me to see the fact that I may have had to go through this certain situation. And because I was able to weather the storm, now I'm able to encourage you. Now I'm able to help you. Now I'm able to tell you. And I'm not trying to look at you in an arrogant way or tell you what you should have did or that couldn't have been me. No, I look at you and say, God has no respect to a person. And if I was able but to stand in the middle of what I stood the same power the same anointing the same spirit on the inside of me he'll help you stand in the middle of your join us Wednesdays at 6 a.m. for morning prayer the number is 904-512-0115 access code 140423 we are praying that as a local church truth and love will continue to be a beacon in the community a lighthouse shining forth the light of christ in all the dark places in the community matthew 5 verse 16. as a precaution to keep everyone safe we ask that everyone continue to wear a mask even if you are fully vaccinated as you participate in our virtual worship experiences we ask you to check in to let pastor know all is well please tag a friend tell a friend and share to your timeline write a review follow and subscribe to all of our social media sites for those who are not on social media you may call into the prayer line to hear the worship experience join us this wednesday march 2nd at 7 p.m for our first wednesday's worship experience it will be a weekday service with a sunday morning feel school of ministry is moving from wednesday to thursday so come join us this Thursday at 7 p.m. either in person or via Zoom as we learn more about how to study the Bible. Contact Sister Laz if you would like to sign up for the class or for the Zoom information. Due to the celebration of life at the church on next Saturday, we will not have open prayer or our on-campus clothes giveaway. We still have I Love My Church shirts. Stop by the TIL store today to purchase your shirt. TIL jersey orders are due by next Sunday, March 6th. Order forms are located at the Ask Me Anything table in the lobby or a form can be emailed to you by contacting Sister Karina at 904-514-9564. We are making progress with our expansion project. If giving electronically, please be sure to select expansion project as your giving type. If giving cash, please be sure to use the blue envelopes. 
Giving statements are available now. Please sign up at the Ask Me Anything table. Join us next Sunday for Holy Communion. Session 1 of our March New Members Connection class will be next Sunday at 8.30 a.m. We are grateful to all who are committed to being a systematic giver of your tithes and offerings. You can give via push pay by texting TILJAX to 77977 via the Truth and Love app and on our website at truthandlove.tv. You may also drop off your giving envelopes Tuesday through Friday between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. or on Sundays between 9 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. Pastor's Perspective Podcast is now streaming on all major podcast platforms. You can listen via Apple, Google, and Spotify. Her Story Unplugged Podcast with Lady C is now streaming on all major podcast platforms, including Apple, Google, and Spotify. You can also follow us on Facebook and YouTube using the handle Her Story Continues and on Instagram using the handle herstory.til. Visit our website at www.herstoryis.org. Here comes the church. Hey, TIL Nation, I'm Janice. Hey, and I'm Marcus. And we are so glad that you decided to join us for the worship experience today. Yes, we're definitely excited. Today is sure to be a powerful, packed word that'll help us get through these trying times. And listen, we know worshiping from home is different, but we want to encourage you to get up and get fully involved. If this is your first time joining us in the virtual worship experience, have no fear, because we're going to provide you with all the helpful hints you need to make your experience the best. Now, during the message, you may see the screen light up with hearts. Again, don't worry. It's just the new hallelujahs. So when you hear something that blesses you and that connects with you, feel free. Just tap the heart and let us know. You can even write a comment if you want, but just remember that comments are visible to the entire viewing audience. That's right. So if you have any specific prayer requests, feel free to reach out to us directly at the number listed on your screen or through any of our platforms. Now, one more thing before we go back to the worship experience. We want you to stay connected to us, so be sure to follow us on social media. Our social media handle is at Truth and Love Jacks. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and we even have our own website. You can check us out at www.truthandlove.tv. We know it's tough not being here with us, and all of us here miss seeing you each and every Sunday and Thursday. Just know that we send our love and our prayers to each. Now, let's jump into the worship experience. Welcome to the worship experience. For when two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I among them. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up into all things, which is the head, even Christ. Let me tell you why you are here. Let me tell you why you are here. Let me tell you why you are here. To get connected to God. To get connected to your God-given purpose. To connect this church to our community. Listen, truth and love will not be church as usual. We will cultivate an atmosphere where the Spirit of the Lord can dwell. And the lost can be reconciled. And the believers can be strengthened and... The body can exhort one another. Here we are committed to pleasing the Lord, to evangelism, to holistic living, to youth empowerment, to discovering purpose, to excellence, to humility and love. Welcome to the worship experience. Welcome to the worship experience. Welcome to the worship experience. Welcome Welcome to to the truth truth and love. To the house of the Lord because we have so much on our hearts, oh God. We have so much on our minds, God, but we give it to you, God. Oh, God, we have to get to the place, oh, God, when we trust you, oh, God. Oh, God, even when you don't do what we expect you to do, God, that you're still more than able, oh, God. We have to get to the point where we trust God, that his obedience is better, oh, God, than what we want him to do, oh, God. That's what I find out when you really get in God. When you really get in God, you want his will to be done. It doesn't matter if it's your will, it's his will. And when you get to that place, you'll never be the same. We have to trust that he's able to do it exceedingly abundantly. And sometimes, Lord, that might look like what we think it shouldn't look like, God. 
we might want you to heal and deliver in one way, oh God, but you cause death to happen, oh God. Oh God, all these trials and tribulations that come, oh God. Some people say, where is God? God is still able. He's still sitting on the throne. He's still powerful. He's still a healer. He's still a deliverer. He's still a way maker. He's still everything that we want him to be. Oh God, he's not contingent based on what we think. For our ways are not his ways and our thoughts are not like his thoughts. We have to trust God in those secret places. Oh God, in those times when it's hard, we have to put our faith in him. And the only way we can do that is sometimes we don't trust him because we don't know him. And the only way we can know God is that we spend time with him. If we pray and we fast and we read his word, it's hard to trust somebody that you don't know. Oh, God, help us to know you in an unusual way, God. Help us to know you in an unusual way, God. Oh, God, help us to know you, oh, God, in a way that we never know you before, God. Oh, God, help us to put our faith on you, God. Help us to lean and depend on you, God. Oh, God, help us to trust in you, God, that you'll never fail us, oh, God. And you never have and you never will, God. You know what's best for us, oh, God. You know the number of hands that we have on our heads, God. Oh, God, you know the activities of our limbs. You know our thoughts, oh, God. You know what we think, oh, God, before we do it, oh, God. You know the intent, the motive behind it, oh, God. Oh, God, we can't hide anything from you, God. We can hide it from other people, but we cannot hide it from you, God. Oh, God, help us to be more like you, God. Help us to trust you, oh, God. Trust you and take you as your word. Help us to put the scripture to faith, oh, God, and to works and do everything that you have called us to do, God. Oh, God, help us to trust you, oh, God. Oh, God, so we can experience your love. We can experience your joy. So we can experience your mercy, oh, God. Oh, God, we just want to trust you more, God. We just want to trust you, oh, God. Oh, God, to lead us. To lead us, oh God. Help us, oh God, to be everything that you have called us to be, God. Oh God, we trust you, God. Oh God, we trust you, God. Oh God, we trust you, God. We trust you with our lives, God. Oh God, we trust you with our issues, oh God. We, we trust you with the ailments, oh God, our sickness, oh God, our diseases, oh God, our heart, oh God, our disappointments, oh God. We trust you, God. We trust you, God. Because you get God that will never fail us, oh God. Oh God, and we're so we're so grateful, God, and we're so grateful, God. And we're so grateful for your love, God, and we're so grateful for your joy, and we're so grateful for your mercy, so oh God. Oh God, we're so grateful for everything that you're doing, God, and everything that you're continuing to do in our lives, God. Oh God, we love you, God. Oh God, we adore you, God. Oh God, have your way in this place, oh God. Move by your spirit, God. Keep that up, open your mouth, and give God some praise on this morning. It sounds real good in this place. Come on. Come on, there's a sweet fragrance in this place. Come on. Come on, come on. Don't let it die out. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Every time you open your mouth and say something, you're serving notice to the enemy that everything that you're trying to do, everything that you're trying to do, it will fail. Because greater is he that is within me that he that is within the world, I've made up in my mind that I'll give God praise despite what I'm going through. Come on, I need some people that have a praise deep down inside. They came with their own hallelujah, their own thank you, Jesus. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, if you only knew what I had to go through to get here right now, if you only knew the tear-soaked nights, if you only knew the times I've had to cry, if you only knew the times I almost threw in the towel, if you only knew the times I almost gave up. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, my, 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 my. Song says, 
I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. It does not matter what it looks like. Does not matter what it feels like. Doesn't matter what your haters say. I got a reason. testimony if only you knew what I had to go through the beautiful thing is I don't look like what I've been oh, I got a reason to give God praise Look at your neighbor say, he's been good. He's been good. He's... That one, a good neighbor. Look at your other neighbor say, he's been good. He's been good. Now clap your hands. Give God some praise one more time. Clap your hands in there. Come on, y'all.
That's a good place to give them praise. That's a good place to give them praise. Lord, you are good, and your mercy endures forever. Matter of fact, I don't deserve it, but you're still good. You should have gave up me a long time ago, Lord, but you are still good. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Even at home, if you're watching online, you ought to be giving God praise right here. Whether you're on your job, regardless of what you're doing, you ought to be giving God praise right here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That sounds good. Clap your hands right here. Come on, let me hear it all over the house. Yeah, that's it. Come on. Even at home, let me see you clap. I'll be here clapping your hands. I bet you. Come on. Come on. good in here. Come on. Say, you don't have to worry. Say, you don't have to worry. And don't you be. And don't you be afraid. Come on. Joy comes in. Joy comes in the morning. Troubles they don't, Troubles last. They don't last. For there's a friend so there's a friend in Jesus. Who will wipe your tears. Yes. If your heart is broken. If your heart is broken. Lift your hands and say, come on, y'all know it. Oh, I know. Say, I know that I know that I no matter what my life is in come on with Jesus I can take with him I know no matter what my life is in that's a good place to clap your hands come on everybody Time, say you don't have to worry. Say you don't have to worry, and don't you be and afraid. Don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the Troubles, morning. They don't last Troubles they don't last always. Come on, for the hell's a friend who will wipe your tears. If your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, "Come on, oh, I know." With Jesus, I can take it. Him, I know I can. No matter what, my life is in. Say it again. No matter what, my life is in. Here we go. 
you I love you. Say. I just really want to tell you I love you. Say that I just really want to tell you I need you. I just really that feels good. Say it again. Come on. Say I just really want to tell you I love you. I just really want to tell you I love you. Tell you I need you. Everybody, everybody, cut your head. Say whoa, oh, 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 say. Come on, here we go. I am your son. You are my father. You, I love you. Say, I just really want to tell you. I, love you. And I just really want to tell you. I need you. I just really want to tell Everybody you. Everybody cut your. Say, whoa, oh, oh, say. Oh, 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 oh. I'm feeling that. I got to say the verse one more time. Do we move? It? Hey, say, I am your son. You are my father. Oh, how you love to love me and you are my soul. There is no other. There is no oh, 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 you love to love me. Say, my love yeah. is in, in your hand. Say, you give me You, I love you, say. I just really want to tell you. I'm feeling good today. I just really want to tell you, I need you, say. I just really want to tell you. Hey, 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 hey. And I just really want to tell you, I love you, say. I just really want to tell you, I love you. I just really want to tell you, I need you, say. I just really want to tell you. Everybody clap you. Whoa. You are my peace. You are my strength. Come on, say you're my everything. Say you are my. You are my peace. You are my strength. Everybody say it. You're my. You are my. You are my peace. You are my strength. But I can't come on say you're my everything. You're my everything. You're my peace in my storm. You're my everything. My strength when I'm wrong. You're my everything. You are my everything, Lord. You're my Come on, yeah. Come on, yeah. Come on, yeah. 
praying for a church that knows he's your everything. Right here. Clap your hands. Oh, that sounds good. That's it. Clap your hands. Ah, yeah. Let me hear y'all say it. Good God, y'all sound good this morning. You're my everything. Yeah. You're my everything. You're my everything. You're my everything. You're my everything. Right here, darling. For eyes have not seen, ears have not heard the great things that God has in store for you. We, we, we let our circumstances and our issues get in the way of what God can do for us. And the worst thing you could do is come into the house of God and keep your mouth shut. Because you're giving the devil exactly what he wants. See, outside these walls, they know how to make noise. But there's a particular kind of noise that when we make it, when we make that noise, the heavens have no choice but to open up. When we make that noise, shackles get broken, yokes get destroyed, bodies get healed. When we make that noise, Demons flee. For at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. Lift your hands into place. Throw something in the atmosphere. Say something to him. Come on. Come on. We didn't come here to spectate. We came to, come on. Come on. We came here to participate. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes, Lord. Come on. That's it, that's it, that's it. It's a sweet fragrance in this place.
Say glory. Sounds so good. To the say glory. Hey, yeah. Sounds so beautiful. One more time. Say glory. Glory. To the last time. Lift your voice. Say glory. To lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Come on, I love the clapping of hands, but lift your voice. Lift your voice. Come on, make that sound. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice. As you begin to lift that sound, your situation is turning around. As, as you begin to lift that sound, situations are turning around in your favor. As you begin to make that sound, as you begin to make that sound, your problem just became your praise report. Come on, as you begin to as you begin to make that sound. Keep going. I promise you something gonna break in here. Come on, y'all stop. 
Y'all sit down if you can, but if you keep making noise like that, I promise you that bank accounts going to get filled, bodies going to get healed. Y'all need to stop that. Y'all need to, y'all come on, y'all need to stop that. I see the demons fleeing off of people's house. I can hear the chains breaking right here. I hear the chains breaking. Yokes are getting destroyed. Ah! My grandmama used to say that he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. I said he's always on time. Mama, my daddy, they might not be able to do it for me, but it's not when I call on the name of Jesus. Demons have to flee in the name of Jesus. Chains have to be brought at the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus. Y'all don't know how powerful you. You got the power in your tongue. Come on. You ought to open up your... Give 
them 10 seconds, Darnell. 10 seconds and we got to move. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. One, two, three, top. Clap your hands, give God some praise one more time. You may be seated. Come on, take your seats, take your seats, take your seats. Good morning. Thank you for joining the worship experience. The praise team has been on fire this morning. So that means you should have already sent some fire signs or, or your uh, your best, your best uplifting emoji, right? Well, if not, go ahead now and do that. We are live right now, so wherever you are, let's go ahead and check in. Sanctuary, let me hear ya. Sounds good, sounds good. Parking lot, lean on them horns. Yes, and virtual audience, Go ahead and start checking in. For all those watching from Facebook, right along the bottom of the live chat, you should see that share arrow. You can post this experience right to your news feed. And if you're watching from YouTube, guess what? You guys are going to have to close out the live chat, like the video, click share, then send the link via text so you can share with your friends and family and encourage them to share as well. Here is what's happening at Truth and Love. We want to give an early happy birthday shout out to our very own Lady C. Sanctuary, let me hear you clapping. Parking lot, lean on them horns. And our virtual audience, Show some happy birthday emojis. And guess what? If you haven't joined, every Saturday at 6 p.m., you can get on Her Story Unplugged. Now, her birthday is this coming Thursday, March the 3rd. May God bless her to celebrate many, many, many more birthdays. As a precaution to keep everyone safe, we ask that you wear a mask even if you are fully vaccinated. Join us this Wednesday, March the 2nd at 7 p.m. for our first Wednesday's worship experience. Let's clap to that. It will be all week, I'm sorry, it will be a weekday service with a Sunday morning feel. Wouldn't y'all like that? I would. School of Ministry is moving from Wednesday to Thursday. So join us this Thursday at 7 p.m. either in person or via Zoom as we learn more about how to study the Bible. Contact Sister Laz if you would like to sign up for the class and for the Zoom information. Due to celebration of life at the church on next Saturday, we will not have open prayer or our on-campus clothes giveaway. Stop by the TIL store to purchase your I Love My Church shirt. TIL jersey orders are due next Sunday, March the 6th. Order forms are located at the Ask Me Anything table in the lobby or a form can be emailed to you by contacting Ms. Karina at 904-514-9564. We are making progress with our expansion project. Let me hear you again. Clap them horns and your best emoji. If given electronically, please be sure to select 
expansion project as your giving type. If given cash, please use the blue envelope. Giving statements are available. Please sign up at the Ask Me Anything table. Join us next Sunday for Holy Communion. And our first New Members Connection class will be next Sunday at 8.30 a.m. And that's what's happening at TIL this week. Let's head back to our live chat and let our pastors know how you are doing. Show some love with your emojis. Let us know you're watching or simply type AIW for all is well. So continue to check in. We can see those comments here and you may even see your comment on the screen. I know you are excited with anticipation for the word. With that being said, let's head back to the worship experience. Here comes the church. Creative Arts Investigative, Investigative Reports. Reports. If, if you're, you're just joining us, I'm here at Truth, Truth and Love Ministries, Ministries where, where singles are reported, reported in hiding or, or missing. This, this is a special, special news edition. edition. Where, where are, are the TIO singles, singles and, and why are they, they in hiding? Now, now, here, here at, at Truth and Love Ministries, the Singles Ministry, known, known by, by the acronym SALT, which, which stands, stands for Single Adult, adult Living, Living True, meet every, every second Saturday, Saturday at, at noon to discuss, discuss topics, topics and needs that, that Christian singles face in today's, today's culture. culture. Like, like so, so many other ministries, ministries the, the singles, singles were forced, forced to forfeit their in-person meetings due to the pandemic, pandemic. So, so they, they meet via Zoom. So the question that's been raised, with the convenience of meeting via Zoom, why, Why have, have the singles, singles gone, gone missing? missing? Now, now there, there has been numerous attempts by the, by the ministry, ministry to host in-person in meetings, meetings and events, events but, but many, many of the singles were nowhere, nowhere to be found. found. We, caught we caught up, up with, with a couple of SALT members, members and, and here's, here's what they, they had to say. say. I think a lot of people sometimes feel they should shy away from being able to talk with anybody about it. Um, trying, trying to be strong, strong and trying, trying to, to think that we've done that on our own. I, um, I feel, I feel guilty, guilty, you know, a lot of people don't, don't want to talk about it. Um, uh, as, as far as, as why we're still single, or how we're it, it's tough, but it is. Um, I, I think, think people, people are just thinking they can handle being single on their own, and, um, which, which you can, can but it's just, just hard, hard to open up. up. Well, well, I actually, actually just, just really tuned in to the Salt ministry. ministry. To tell, to tell the truth, truth I, kept I kept missing, missing it. it. And um, I, I kept, kept avoiding, avoiding, you know, because, because I'm, I'm new, and, and I'm like, like, I don't know, I don't know, so I don't want to get on. on. Um, what if, what if they, you know, you know, what if what I say if something, something crazy, crazy or, or, but, but I try, I try to tune, to tune in, in as often as I can. can. I actually, I actually only, only tuned in once, once to fill my mind, to tune in more, but, um, I kind of, kind of, Know, know that, that these, these days, days because, because Saturday, Saturday is for you to be a busy day. day. Um, um. All righty then. Okay, come on, y'all. Let's put our hands together and give God some praise. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise in here. 
Uh, come on, you can do much, 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 much better than that. Come on, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will, I will, you will, we will rejoice and be glad therein. Come on. Come on, let's seal this atmosphere with some praise, with some glory, with some honor. Hallelujah. I can hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, claim your seats. Come on, claim your seats. Amen. I promise you that is a phenomenal video by our singles ministry. Amen. Put your hands together for a singles ministry. Sister Jewel, I don't see her. I'm sure she's God bless you, Sister Jewel. That's a phenomenal video. We did some tweaking. We're always trying to be better and always trying to do better and always trying to uh, present the best um, quality online and in-house. So um, we did some tweaking last week, and I'm sure that's probably what, what transpired with the, with, the, with, the, with the reverb. I felt the power on that thing. That was the anointing. That's it. That ain't nothing but the anointing. So the anointing from that. But amen. I, I promise you the video is good. So we're going to post that. She's going to send that out. And we, we may try to give it a shot, be the Lord's will. Maybe next week we'll, we'll see what happened. Uh, next week is uh, Holy Communion, so maybe the week after that we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna give it another go. We're going to give it another go. I'm not sure what transpired, but I didn't want y'all to sit through another five minutes of that. Amen. I was about to lose my mind over there. My, my God, Jesus Christ. What the devil is going on over here? What is going on? I tried to, I, tried, <laughs> I sat there as long as I could. <laughs> I don't got nothing but love for you. Do you have any first time visitors, first time ever, truth and love, first time ever? God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. We thank God for you. You first time visitor, you tearing our church up like that. I saw you over here praising. You can't be, can't be no first time visitor praising like that. Now, hold on now. Hold on now. Hold on. It's our church now. But God bless you. <laughs> Did somebody invite you? Somebody invite you? Is that Sister Pratt? What's up, Sister Pratt? God bless you. Get this gift card to Sister Pratt. And then give this to the, to the first time visitor when she, she wanted to dance like that. Amen. Dance your way all the way to the Cheesecake Factory. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> Make sure you fill that card out and turn that in. At the end of the service, there'll be another gift for you. Be another gift for you. Right down that hallway to the left, to the left, to the left, to the left, to the right, to the right, to the right. Y'all y'all so say, boy, y'all so say, y'all so say, y'all know y'all know nothing about that. All right, y'all know nothing about that. <laughs> I thank God for you. Appreciate you guys. Come on, put your hands together for somebody inviting somebody. That's what we do, you all. We have an inviting culture. You don't have to feel no type of way. You just invite somebody and, and a gift card may belong to you as well. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to really honor the Lord with our giving. Come on, we're a generous church and we love to give to our local church. Amen. And we're thankful for that. So come on, grab your, grab your tithe, grab your offering, grab your sacrificial gift. We are sitting at with our one hundred thousand dollar goal we have uh currently eight thousand eight hundred and thirty dollars come on amen come on y'all to clap to that we only got ninety one thousand more to go but we're making some progress so as as uncle samuel is coming your way don't forget about the house of the lord amen but before you go get that new uh 60 70 inch television before you go get that that playstation 9 before you upgrade your android to an iphone before you do all of that make sure you take care of the house of the lord make sure you take care of the house of the lord i got one little clap over here god bless you Bree. that's why you're one of my favorite i see y'all it's very strategic so make sure make sure you do what you need to do we are we are pushing towards doing what god has called us to do as a local church as you see we need some more room we're getting ready possibly getting ready to go back to two services because of the way that our uh just the way we just need more room so we need to go back to two services do what we need to do so it won't be all oh, i hear y'all so disappointed oh y'all are happy i don't know y'all happy i'll be i need y'all to be i keep that same energy when i tell y'all what time the new service i'm gonna be just keep that same energy because we probably not gonna be looking at no nine o'clock probably not gonna be looking at no nine o'clock probably gonna be a little earlier than that a little early a little earlier a little earlier than that, a little earlier than that. So, where all my, I want to get it on out the way, Saints. Where am I getting on out the way, Saints? That, all right, I want to keep that same energy. Keep that same energy when they tell y'all what time that early service is. That time that early service. I hear, I hear eight. I hear eight. I don't know. I don't know. I hear eight. Look at, look at Sister Lamar. About shot. We'll see. We, we going to see. I don't want to run off. My, I don't want to run y'all off too fast. We'll, we'll announce it accordingly. So, amen. We're trying to expand our facility, trying to do what we need to do for our youth. 
And as we are giving, always keep in mind that we are we are an outreach driven ministry. Listen to this, you all. For the month of February, uh, this is, is numbers probably much more than that. We had our outreach ever yesterday at Callaway Cove. I'm not sure how many people we were able to bless Callaway Cove every single week. But we, we, we fed almost 500 families for the month of February. Come on, somebody. That's absolutely phenomenal. Wave at me if you're part of outreach in any kind of way. Part of outreach, sis Kim, Yolanda, sis Sister Reddit, sister, sister Last, sister, sister Underwood, I see you. Sister Sharon, I see Sister Early, Sharon. All right, Sister Tyler. No, that's not Tyler. That's Sister, that's sister all, all the outreaches. God bless you. Sister Wilcox, that's Sister Christopher. Bree, I see y'all. All right. Out there, Sister Frenches, I see you all. Part of outreach, man. We are an expansive ministry when it comes to outreach. There's plenty you can do. But if you can't come out and pass out no hot dogs, if you don't want to go to Callaway Cove and love on them children, come on, you can. You know how you can outreach? You can outreach by hitting this bucket right here. Hit this bucket. Amen. Hit this bucket. And make sure you hit it with something that ain't going to hit you back. Amen. We hit, hit that bucket. <laughs> Keep on tithing, keep on giving. What my 43 strong at? 43% of our ministry tithe on a regular basis. So keep on tithing, keep on giving, keep doing what you need to do. You ready to give? Come on, hold it up. Father, we thank you for every gift and every giver. We thank you because you give seed to the sower. And God, we're so excited to be able to give. We're so excited to be able to further the gospel. We're so excited to be able to feed people and clothe people and do what it is that you called us to do. Now, as we hold up our offering, as we hold up our tithe, as we hold up our sacrificial gift, we know it's going to leave our hand, leave our account, but it'll never leave our life. We know you're going to give it back to us according to your purpose and your will. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Amen. By the direction of the saint every servants God bless you sister Ruth Thank you for everyone who sends in their type and offering. God bless you. Appreciate your faithfulness and your commitment. You hand that to them from the front of the Thank you so much. Come on, put your hands together then if you gave your very best. Thank you so much for your generosity. Man, we thank God for you. Right before we get ready to pivot and transition to the word of the Lord, of course, we know we got to have our social media time. This is a day and time we live. We are in a hybrid church age where we have people here in person. We got folk in the parking lot, people on Facebook, Instagram, Instagram, Twitter. So I just ask you, everybody who's in person, I desire for you to grab your electronic device. If you don't mind, go to one of your social media platforms of your choice, whether that's Facebook or YouTube or or, or or Hulu or, or Discovery. No, that's at the church. Go to Facebook or YouTube and want you to share. Come on, just really easy on Facebook. Share posts, share posts. Come on, there should be many, many, many more of us over on, on the Facebook. Come on, get a little petty and send it to somebody who you know not watching. Come on, send it to them. Develop the truth and love ice. I see Miss Jackie Joyner. Bless you, Adrian Joyner. Sister Tanisha. 
such a charming Renee, bless you, Miss Tawanda Green, uh, Artie, what's up, Miss Artie, Terry Ann, what's up, Terry Ann, bless you, all right, Miss Miss Bernice Lamar, Double Dip, Melinda Brookins, all right, I see you, what's up, Miss Frenches, Miss 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 Frenches and Miss Miss Mary, she say, hey, Pastor, what's up, Robert, I see all of y'all over here on Facebook, let me see YouTube, are y'all doing it? Make some noise in person if you're doing it. You doing that for me? Come on, do that. At least like the video on, on one of them and share. Do that for me. YouTube, Sister Sharonda, Double Dipper, Sister Wise. I see you, Sister Dinkins, Dooley Green, Brother McDaniel, Vicky Tyler, Cassandra Robinson, oh, Melita Collins, Jackie Madden. All right. Miss Mary Smith, Ray Carter, Brother Enrico and Sister Ivy. Jennifer Lopez is holding it down watching us. All right. All right. Lady D. What's up, Lady D? <laughs> Carrie Finn. Mary Gordon, all the way from Arkansas. Sister Gardner, Denise Gardner. All right, Tracy Carnes. Michaela, Kimmy to you, Kimmy to us, Brittany. That's a, you, you singing and checking in. And that's amazing. How are you doing that? How you doing? How you doing that, girl? You's a bad girl. He's a bad girl. Everything I am and everybody else. Sister Hoskins and everybody else. All right, do that for me. I appreciate you. As we're doing that, we're going to let them, they're going to transition to this last worship song. And as we get ready to transition, as soon as you get done checking in and doing all that, come on, rest on your feet. Let's prepare our hearts and our minds uh, to receive what it is that God desires to say to us. I know that God has a word for us. Anybody believe that, that God has a word for us? So my heart has to be right. Man, we do this. We do this so strategically. I was going to teach on, I was going to teach on how not to to get something out of worship experience how not to get something out of church and I was inspired by a brother can't think of his name right now but he put a post online and he said I went to church today and I didn't get anything out of it and so many people harped on that so many people was in the comments saying that's why I don't go no more that's why I don't go no more but he named some things and he said you know I, whenever you go to church tired probably not going to get anything out whenever you come distracted got your mind on this and that yeah maybe it was arguing on the way to church and fussing and all that and then as soon as you get in here praise the lord good morning praise the lord you're probably not going to get much out you got something on your mind you're trying to go somewhere or you're watching the watch and watching the clock and all of that you're not going to get much out but this is what this time is for we set this worship song so you you can kind of recalibrate your mind you can be able to check in and be able to get what it is that God desires before the word of God comes. So when the word comes, you don't got to fight through your tiredness. You don't got to fight through your distraction. You don't got to fight through all this stuff that's on your mind, but God can speak to you. Are y'all ready for that? Come on, put your hands together. Come on, Blaze. Take us in.
say for every trial. For every mountain, come on. For, For every mountain, you brought me up. You brought me up. For, For every trial, For every trial. You, you see me, me through. through. For every, For every verse. Come on, say hallelujah. It's your last chance. Come on, real big, real strong. Somebody say, for every mountain, you see, and you brought. For every, 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 you see. Give us some praise, eh? Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Blaze. Stay on your feet just for a moment. Stay on your feet just for a moment. Come join me real quick, baby. Come join. Put your hands together for my wife. Put your hands together for Lady C. Oh, come on. Y'all do better than that. Come on. I am because she is. I am because she is. Doesn't she look good? She looks good. She always looks good. I appreciate you, girl. Love you. Her birthday is going to be on this Thursday, and so we're not going to be here um, worshiping. So I want to give the church an opportunity, give the bodies of believers an opportunity to be able to, to wish you happy birthday. And we have some others that's coming. They desire to say something to you. Y'all can come right on. Y'all help the ladies up if you don't mind. Help the ladies up, fellas. Thank you so much. All right. God bless you. Come on in here. Come on, y'all together. Come on. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Lady C. Happy birthday to you. Now, this is the this is the Henley family tradition. I didn't start doing this until, until I came in the family 17 years ago, but every birthday for the whole birthday, long as we over there, they got to play Stevie Wonder Happy Birthday over and over and over again. I mean, it's a Henley tradition. So, happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Come on, put your hands together for my wife. Baby, I love you. You want to say something? I'm sorry. I didn't give you the opportunity, but it's time to preach now. Come on, get out for the statement. Thank y'all so much. God bless you, and I love each and every last one of you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. Thank you for the, the blessings that you all give. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Trying to help her down, trying to help her down, amen. Trying to help her down, I'm sorry. All right, come on, grab your Bible, grab your phone, your tablet, whatever you have. We're going to Genesis chapter 50. Genesis chapter 50, verse number 20. Genesis chapter 50. Yeah, that's legal, that's my wife, that's legal, that's legal. Oh, that's mine. Genesis chapter 50. 
Verse 1. Amen. I, I got a supersonic hearing. I heard that over there. I heard that. Genesis chapter 50. Verse 20. <laughs> Genesis chapter 50. <laughs> verse number 20. You have it? If you don't have it, we got a, we got a, we got a verse of scripture for you on the screen. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20 says, As for you, this is Joseph talking to his brothers. As for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good. To bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. Somebody say amen, amen. to the reading of God's word. Today we're in part four, our final installment of our Matters of the Heart series. Uh, today from the topic, evidence for elevation. Evidence for elevation. Hallelujah. So Father, we thank you. We thank you for your, your spirit, your anointing, your power, your presence is in this place. We thank you, God, for this moment that we have all should have been waiting for. And God, that's you speaking to our hearts and our minds. We thank you for every facet, every part of this worship experience. It's been only to build us up to this moment. So God, I ask you, God, that where you will bring your people in, let us gather around your word. Rid us of every distraction and every hindrance and any and everything that looks to stop and to block the gospel, the word of God from having a free course. I pray that you'll destroy yokes today. I pray that you'll loose shackles today. I pray that you'll set the captive free. I pray that you'll give us a word today, God that's going to change our lives forever and we thank you in advance in Jesus matchless name somebody say amen amen, amen and amen come on celebrate the Lord if you expected him to say something to you you can claim you can claim your seats evidence for elevation for the entire month of February we have been we have been walking through and examining this life the life of this brother by the name of Joseph and one thing that you will see very, very quickly as we've been walking through Genesis and, and the book of Genesis is really amazing because God, God really spins about uh, just a sentence, just a sentence of, of explaining to us how he formed the universe. All it just simply says in the beginning, God created heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void. And he goes and he kind of gives us a little bit of details and fills in some details. And so it's not a lot of information, not a lot of information as much as we probably want to know how this worked and how he did that just a sentence just a couple of words that kind of tell us everything that we see as we know as a universe but God has spent one-fourth of this book of Genesis describing the life and the story of this brother by the name of Joseph isn't that amazing I, I said God just spends a little bit of time telling us about the universe but then he spends Genesis chapter 37 and then you skip chapter 38 but then chapter 39 all the way to chapter 50 we get an opportunity to see the life of an individual that is what we like to call a type of Christ. Joseph is a type of Christ. He's an individual that we can look at in the Old Testament and see his life and see how he modeled living for the things of God and allow God to use him in such a way and we can mirror him. He's a type of believer. He's someone we can look at their, 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 their life and look at how they dealt with the things that God allowed them to go through and we can look at his life and he's not the ultimate example but he is an example and we can look at his life and how God did all these things through the life of Joseph to bring him to the place that we're looking at today in chapter 50. I believe it's very, very strategic how God allowed us to kind of see what was going on from the very infancy before Joseph ever was on the scene. You know, he was born in a family that was jacked up. You know, he was born into some drama and born into some mess. And because he was the favorite child of his father's favorite wife, here it is, Joseph was God's, he was God's anointed, but not only was he God's anointed, he was his father's favorite. He was his father's favorite. And because he was his father's favorite you see that his brothers hated him they hated him they hated him not only because he was his father's favorite but also his father gave him a colorful coat and then you got to go back and listen to all the messages I don't got time to bring you all the way back up through the life of Joseph but you know the truth of the teaching this in Genesis chapter 37 37 all the way through chapter 50 you'll see the life of Joseph and God allowed Joseph to be sold into slavery God allowed Joseph not only to be sold into slavery but go to this 
brother by the name of Potiphar's home. Joseph began to kind of matriculate to the top of Potiphar's home. And then after that, he went to prison. And now where we left off looking at Joseph on last week, he's there in prison and the baker has forgotten about him. The individual that he met in prison, he interpreted their dream and said, before you get out, bro, all I need you to do is make sure that you remember me. Make sure that you get to the place whenever you have audience with Pharaoh, remind Pharaoh that I'm here and tell him my calls and tell him that I'm here and I haven't done anything to deserve to be here. But the Bible says that the brother forgot about Joseph and Joseph was in prison for another two years. As we look at what God did through the life of Joseph, it's very important for us to be able to see what it is that God desires to do, for our, do through in and through our lives. Because if we don't have our mindset on the things of God, the enemy will come and he will literally try to go for the jugular. Remember we talked about going for the jugular? What, what does the enemy do to go to the jugular? He wants to, he, he doesn't care if I sing, he doesn't care if I shout, he doesn't care if I dance, he don't care if I run, he don't care if I give, but if I can keep something in my heart against you, if I can keep something in my heart, some hatred, the Bible says that they hated Joseph so badly they couldn't even say any peaceable words to him, his own brother. It, it's not the fact of what they did to brother Joseph, it was who it was that did this to Joseph. It wasn't the people around the corner. It wasn't the people across the street, but it was his own brothers that hated him. And that's how the enemy gets us. He gets us to the place that we take care of all of these other things, but because of these issues and because I've been offended and because I'm going through all of these particular things, the enemy tries to go to the juggler and try to keep me bound and keep me in a place that where God cannot get the glory out of my life. When you look at the life of Joseph, man, if anybody was in the school of the hard knocks, it was Joseph because he had to come up on the rough side of the mountain, as it were. Joseph, as I just described, he went from the pit, and then after he went to the pit, he went to part of his house, then part of his house to prison. And this brother, in spite of everything that he went through, this is what I love about Joseph, he maintained his character. He maintained being an individual that I can go through all of these situations, and I'm going to show you some courage. I'm going to show you some stamina. I'm going to show you some backbone and some grit. I'm going to be an individual that will not allow my circumstances to dictate how it is I'm supposed to walk out the things of God. But Joseph is an individual that shows us that you can take a licking and you can keep on ticking. Come on, where, where, where my saints at? Where my believers at? That you, you, didn't, you didn't have a silver spoon when you was growing up. You didn't, you didn't grow up on the right side of the railroad track. You didn't have a perfect picture of a family. You didn't have the perfect mom and the perfect dad. You didn't have the perfect siblings. But God took your perfect mess and God created a perfect storm and God is going to get some glory out of everything that you went through and Joseph is one that we can look at to see how you can go through all of these things and yet still give God your best through your life so last week we discussed critical condition because here if my heart isn't right and my heart isn't postured properly and I've allowed the fact that the enemy is gone to for the juggler and because if I allow the enemy because I've gone through the school of the heart knocks to harden my heart and my heart is in critical condition I will not be able to do what God has called me to do and so last week we, we discussed and I don't got time to reteach it re-preach it go back and listen to it it's everywhere here we discussed last week that we ought to re-engage even when we have been ruthless even when life has been ruthless we ought to re-engage even when life has been ruthless what, what, what does that mean again because sometimes life has just been tough and because life has been tough we decide to clock out because life has been tough we decide not to be a part anymore we'll say things like this I'm just going to remove myself from the situation but that's not how the people of God ought to be we ought to be engaged come on you ought to be engaged in your family you ought to be engaged on the job you're not just there for no paycheck God can take Take care of you. God don't need that company to take care of you. That, that is a, just a resource. God is your source but you're on that job so you can be able to engage with individuals but you cannot allow hurt. You cannot allow pain and church hurt and all this stuff that we talk about that get you to the place where you detach from the moment. Then we also discuss that I have to learn to release regret in order to be refreshing. Lord have mercy. This was, this was so good because here Joseph is in prison. He's in prison and he saw a brother and then he saw 
saw the individuals with their, with their head down. They felt some type of way because they were going through what they were going through. And Joseph asked them, what is wrong? I love that about Joseph because he didn't allow the fact that he had some drama and he had some pain to get him to the place where I ain't worried about what you're going through. I got my own mess. But no, Joseph gave himself over to the things of God so he can be refreshing. Lord, I speak that over your life that you'll be a refreshing believer. The way you'll be to the place of people just love being around you. That people will show up just to be able to pour their heart out to you because they know they're going to pray. You're going to pray for them and you're going to encourage them. And Joseph got to be a refreshing believer. But not only that, we have to resist seeking revenge. I'm just bringing you up to speed so you can be able to know where we are. Resist seeking revenge because I was not remembered. Jo Joseph was not remembered by this individual in prison. It was, it was the baker that was supposed to remember him. And here this brother totally forgot about Joseph. Whether he did it purposely or whether he did it uh, in it unintentionally, he still forgot about Joseph. But Joseph was not in prison just sitting up and saying, oh, because they didn't remember me, because they didn't help me, because they didn't assist me. He was not soaking in his pain. But then lastly, we, we left off with, I, I must resolve. Come on, we got to resolve this. I must resolve that my relationship release is in my reliability lord lord jesus my my release what what would he mean bro pastor god is god you've been going through some things but god is saying i want to pull you out i, I want to release you but I, i'm only going to release you depending upon how reliable you are a, a, a lot of times lord have mercy in the body of christ we don't exemplify patience i told the connection class today the fruit of the spirit of love joy peace patience all is long suffering all that we got all of the fruit of the spirit and i said maybe maybe my, my fruit of the spirit as relates to faith may be like a watermelon oh but my my, my patience fruit may be like a little t90 little 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 little, little, little something here can i tell you and here sometimes that's how we are when it comes to patience even as relates to the body of christ when do we want to come out we want to come out as soon as we encounter it when do we want to go to the next place as soon as it drops in our spirit and oftentimes we're ready to go before god is ready to release us and oftentimes we we're so busy worried about our next that we're not maximizing on our now but I must know that wherever God has me I got to do the best that I can where I'm at I got to give him glory where I'm at and when I give him glory where I'm at my release will be predicated on my reliability now now as we looked at Joseph Joseph was released from prison because he was reliable every situation his brother would drop in he rose to the top and can I tell you whatever God has for you God has for you stop complaining about the fact that people are overlooking you and you're not getting the same opportunities that everybody else get if God has something for you you'll rise to the top no matter if you're the top fry man at the fry at the fry making place I don't care if you're if you're a pie taster at the pie at the pie at the pie factory I'm trying to find I don't say if you eat you sampling pies at the pie factory God will let you rise to the top and that's the point when you look at the life of Joseph God will get the glory out of your life when you give it when you give it to him joseph is in prison and here the, the this individual finally remember when pharaoh has a dream about this this dream that he cannot interpret he doesn't know what in the world's going on the dream was speaking of the seven years of famine and the seven years of, of prosperity that was going to hit egypt and here the brother remember joseph was in prison and they called joseph up joseph interpreted the dream gave gave pharaoh a plan for the dream and god allowed joseph to be able to assist pharaoh isn't that amazing in one season of his life joseph was deemed unnecessary in one season of his life Joseph would deem even aggravating and agitating. Oh, but sometimes God got to take you out of a place of familiarity and drop you into another place to where people can recognize the gifting on your life and recognize the anointing on your life. Come on, the same individual that thought Joseph was just trying to be bothersome. Oh, now in another season, God said, you know what? I need what you got. I'm just trying to encourage somebody and tell you maybe, just maybe, you're trying to plow in a field that God has not put you in maybe just maybe you're trying to promote to an audience that God didn't call you to oh but that doesn't mean you put your stuff up that doesn't mean you take your ball and go home but don't that just mean that there's an audience for you and you got to keep on being faithful you got to keep on being available keep on being teachable and God will give you the people that he's called you to Joseph 
was in prison. And Pharaoh said, you the man, you the man that I need. And now Joseph gives him the plan. And just as God revealed it to Joseph, he had this, this interval of seven years. Now the people of Egypt have already experienced the seven years of prosperity. And Joseph, through his strategic wisdom, they begin to save. Somebody say save. Oh, isn't that something that we can learn from Brother Joe that whenever God is blessing, we shouldn't spend everything. Come on, isn't that a blessing the way we shouldn't live hand to mouth just because I got it in and we see it and we see it and the money just burned through our pocket and burned through our hole. No, Joseph took everything that was coming in and he took a fraction of what it was that was coming in and they put it to the side. They had so much in a famine that when the people ran out in Egypt, they were able to sell it to the people of Egypt. Egypt and not only sell it to the people of Egypt but sell it to the neighboring countries because they had so much and that's all the pastor trying to tell you today while you're getting your income tax and while you're getting your extra paycheck and you're getting your overtime check and all that come on you, you shouldn't spend everything you get oh because can I tell you God tells us that we ought to be we ought to be strategic and we ought to be wise with what we get and Joseph shows us this and now it's seven years seven years of famine and now the second part of the prophecy was seven years, seven years of prosperity rather. And the second part now is seven years of famine. And now we're two years into the seven years of famine and our story picks up. Now y'all follow me. I said seven years of prosperity, right? Joseph and the crew, they saved. And now the second part is seven years of famine. And now we're two years in. So how much time is left? It's five more. Y'all a smart class. This is the best service I've had all day. Look at y'all keeping up with me. Look, look at Genesis chapter 42, verse number one. Look what the Bible says. When, when Jacob learned that there was grain for sale in Egypt, he said to his sons, why do you look at one another? Here it is. They're in. They're in. They're, 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 in, they're over in the land. The, 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 they're in Canaan, and here the Bible says, as they're in Canaan, they're trying to figure out that they're in the middle of a famine. Now it's two years into the famine, and Jacob learned that there's grain. And Jacob said, "Why are we sitting around looking at each other? I, I think that's so strategic that they're in this famine, and they just they're, they're all they got all these grown men sitting around just looking at each other, and they're in the middle of a famine." And Jacob said, "I heard that there's grain for." Hell in Egypt, why are you just sitting here looking at each other? Lord have mercy. I'm, I'm talking already to somebody because here you, you're waiting on something to happen and God has given you a word. God has let you hear that there's something that you can do about your situation. Why are you just going to sit around and look at one another? Somebody will say, make something happen. Come on. You ought, to, you ought to do something. You ought to do something because God is telling you not just to sit around and complain and sit around and talk about the famine, but every now and then you got to step out and do what God God has called you to do. In fact, I'm going to be teaching on this in our first, first Wednesday worship experience. I'm going to talk about those four lepers that are sitting at the gate and they looked at one another and said, why will we just sit here and die? Every now and then you got to every now and then you got to get up. Every now and then you got to go from where you are in order to get to where God has. Why are we just sitting there looking at each other? Oh, I need to do something. Who am I talking to? The way you, you've allowed this new year to come in and you kept on saying what you're going to do this year and now we're getting ready to close February and now we're going into the third month of the year and you still have not done what it is that God has called to do or what you said you're going to do for the things of God but God has told me to tell you why are you just looking around oh it's time for you to get up it's time for you to do what God has called you to do and that's what Jacob Jacob said why are we looking at each other look what he says in Genesis Genesis chapter 42 verse 2 come on y'all this is walking through the Bible look at this he says and, and he said Behold, I've heard that, there, that there's grain for sale in Egypt. Look what it says. Go down and buy grain for us there that we may live and not die. Look at verse 5. It said, Thus the sons of Israel came to buy among the others who came. So again, I'm telling you that Joseph did such a strategic job and such a phenomenal job bringing, these, bringing, bringing the people of God together, bringing the people of Egypt together rather, and saving people was coming from everywhere to buy in a famine. Isn't that good news? That we can be in a famine we can be in a pandemic people can be businesses can be closing oh and the things can be just all topsy-turvy everywhere else but God can allow you to be blessed in a famine let me go that's not my message G Genesis 42 and 6 said now Joseph look at this was the governor over the land and he was the one who sold to all the people of the land and Joseph's brothers came and bowed themselves before him with their faces to the ground Verse 7 says, Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them. 
but he treated them like strangers and spoke roughly to them. That's somebody's word right there. They didn't throw me in the pit. They didn't throw me in the pit. They didn't throw me. That's my word right there. Don't highlight that and underline that. Oh, look, I can talk roughly to them. That's, that, that's not, they need to keep on, keep on listening. Keep on listening here. Just, just somebody, somebody's like, oh, I'm done. That's it right there. Can, can I tell you? No, nope, that's not it. The Bible says, Jojo jo, say, jo, jo say, where y'all, where y'all come from? And they said, we from, we from Canaan to buy food. And look at this. Again, the Bible reemphasizes in verse 8. It says, and Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. Isn't this amazing? And, and Joseph is dressed in his Egyptian garb. Joseph is talking Egyptian. We'll see that. Read this when you get a chance. Pastor Kobe, I don't got time to go through one verse sometimes. So you know good and doggone well ain't going to be able to go through chapter 30, 42, all the way to chapter 50. Y'all already know that's not going to happen, Captain. So y'all just need to kind of just, just read read your Bible. It's there. It's there. Don't, I promise it's going to be there on Monday. It's going to be there Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's going to be there all the week. You can read this whole story. I don't, I don't got time to do it right now. But can I tell you to hear Joseph is in front of in front of his brothers he's speaking in egyptian he has an interpreter there so he's totally he's totally unrecognizable by his brothers but listen i want you to see the picture here's here's the point because it has been 21 years since the last time they saw joseph some say 22 21 22 years from the last time he was 17 years old when they lifted him out of that pit and sold him to those traders and now here, Joseph, 20-some-odd years later, finally seeing these individuals that sold him into slavery, finally seeing these individuals that's, that's coming to a place that have gotten him in prison, gotten him thrown into lockdown and all these things, and Joseph now is fake, and now he's in a place of power. Now, now, the, now the tables have turned away. He's not a little 17-year-old boy anymore. Now he's a grown man and in a place of power. And here can I tell you that God fixed these circumstances. I just believe that God fixed these circumstances to where, to where he allowed a famine to be in the land that would cause Joseph's brothers to have to come to eat. Look how God to intertwine this and interwove the circumstances to where God allowed Joseph to be in a place of prominence and power and cause his brothers and his family to be in a family that'll bring that'll bring Joseph brothers face to face for him. What are you trying to say, brother Pastor? I'm trying to tell you that God loves you and I so much that where He will orchestrate our lives to get us into a place the way we can get ourselves together. Y'all, y'all ain't see that coming. Y'all, y'all thought I was gonna say you can live your best life now. You thought I was gonna say you can name it and claim it and blab it and grab it and call it and haul it, but no, God will bring you to a place the way you and I have to repent. And God said, you know what? I want to do something in your life, but you got to get this together. God, he strategically put Joseph's brothers right in front of him. So what are the brothers going to do? What are the brothers going to do? And then more importantly, what is Jojo going to do? At this moment, Joseph, Joseph can respond in many different ways. How, how would you respond? These are the brothers that have thrown you. Look at here. These brothers have thrown you in the pit. They was about to kill you. And somebody said, nah, let's not kill them. Let's try to make a little money off of them. And now all this, it's been 20 some odd years. And now you're in a place of power. What are you finna do? Oh, some, some of us be like, boy, the Lord is my shepherd and he know what I wanted. Look here. Some of us have been licking our chops and say, look at God. God don't like ugly. <laughs> jo Joseph could have responded in many different ways. What, 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 and who would, have blamed, who would have blamed Joseph for putting him in prison? I want you to see how it feels to be in prison. Who, who would have blamed Joseph for, 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 for sending them back home? Look what jo Joseph could have said. You know what? I'm, I'm Joseph. Now get out of here. Not going to give you no grain. Not going to give you no. Go get that grain out that pit. Come on, y'all know how we do. Go get that grain. Go get that grain from Potiphar's house. Go get, go get that grain. Or Joseph could have. He could have killed them. Joseph, listen to me, y'all. Joseph is the second most important person on the planet. At that time, Egypt was a world power. Pharaoh is the most important, most powerful man on the planet. And here, Pharaoh is second. Joseph is second to Pharaoh. He could have, he could have said, he could have thrown them in prison. He could have sent them back empty-handed. He could have killed them. But Joseph decided to forgive them. I knew y'all were like that. <laughs> Joseph, without, no, without a Bible, without Holy Spirit, without Blaze, without Pastor Kobe, without nobody saying, I heard. 
jo Joseph decides to forgive. Isn't it amazing? This brother is an Old Testament saint, and here he exemplifies the type of character that you and I long for. He exemplifies the kind of character that where we say on our best day we pray we can be able to step up to the plate and forgive the way that brother Joseph did. Now, now we can read this real easy and turn the page and talk about the story, but forgive me. Anybody will agree with me that forgiveness is a difficult and an uncomfortable process. For forgiveness is very difficult. It's uncomfortable. And here when we make a decision to forgive, here it is. Listen to me closely. When I make a decision to forgive, God gives me the grace to forgive. But Oh, yes, he does. But as long as you just want to stay stuck, oh, that, that's exactly where you're going to be. When I, refuse to ref when, I forgive, when I refuse to forgive, then Satan has a loophole in my life. Let's talk about unforgiveness for a moment. because This is what this entire series is about. Oh, unforgiveness, look at it closely, is a state of resentment. Bitterness, hatred, hostility, anger, fear, and stress toward an individual who has transgressed against, uh, transgressed against another in some way. Un unforgiveness. We, 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 re we resent the fact that they did what they did. We're bitter. We hate them. We're, we're hostile. We're angry. We're, we, we just in fear. All of these emotions are wrapped up in, in unforgiveness. And when someone wrongs us, and again, I've said this every single week, there's some real things that have happened to us all. But because we're people of God, because we're a family of God, because we've received the Lord Jesus Christ, we got to give all of our hurt and all of our pain and all of our anger and all of our hostility and all of our stress. We got to give it to the Lord and we got to trust him the way we can be able to say, you know what, God, in and of myself, I can't do it. In and of myself, I don't got, can I say it? No, I don't got nothing for him. I, in and of myself, I, if, if I had it in my way, if it, were, if it was on fire, I wouldn't spit on him. Come on, y'all. Y'all know how y'all know how we do. And I leave it with a spit. Can I tell you, there's on fire? We, we wouldn't help him at all. But can I tell you that unforgiveness, y'all already know what I'm trying to say. Unforgiveness is a cancer that eats away from the soul of the person that's in anger. L listen to me. Let me say because I love this about Brother Joseph. Because listen to me. Genuine forgiveness is a key part. Of not letting those wrongs hurt you any longer. Oh, thank you so much. I heard somebody back there. Thank you. I appreciate you. This is what forgiveness is about. It's not a fact. It's not, it's not the fact that it didn't hurt you. We want to acknowledge it hurt. It hurt you. It hurt. It hurt. It hurt. But what, what genuine forgiveness is, I'm not going to allow this hurt to hurt me anymore. I, no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not going to allow it to hurt me. It, it has to come a time in our life that we have to close the gap on the pain. Come on, don't, don't, don't you listen to people that tell you that you're always going to be hurting from this issue. I don't care if someone betrayed you, lied on you. I don't care. We can talk about whatever category you want to talk about. Somebody lying. Either God is lying or either I'm lying. When I say I can't get over it and I can't forgive and I can't move on from it, God has told me to heal give me the grace that no matter what the situation is I, I can get I can get away from it so I just got to get to the point that where it doesn't hurt me it doesn't hurt me anymore have, have anybody ever burnt their hand when my cooks have you ever burnt your hand before come on have you ever have something ever happened to you to where you just need, you need to get some stitches I, I, I mean I got, I've gotten some stitches on my eyebrow before I was doing something I had no business doing and, and hit my head on the chair had to get some stitches and that thing hurt I mean blood was coming I look like a I look like a movie and that thing was coming out all, all over the place I still put my a little band-aid on wrapped up put my hat on and still went to the party y'all gonna help me the lord was trying to stop me from going to the party but i said they ain't they don't mean nothing I'm, let me just go on and go on and do what i need to do here no i ain't, I ain't got this outfit for nothing i'm still i'm gonna go anybody anybody ever know you I, was, I probably got a concussion and everything but yeah that that, that thing hurt and i had to go to the hospital and everything but i went going that night i was going to that party i was going to go to the hospital later <laughs> and here that, that thing hurt but now i can touch it and now my, my now my, my now kindle picks at me by my eyebrow now say daddy your brow, what's wrong with your brow? What, what is that right there? And now, now it, it, all I have now is a scar, and that's all God is trying to do in our lives. That when someone hurts you, oh, you 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 just have a scar. It, it, I, I'll never forget. I hit my head on that chair. I never forget. I had to get those painful stitches. Oh, but can I tell you now? My scar has a sermon. Yes, sir. Now I can look at my scar and I can say, let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you what transpired. It hurt me, but it don't have to hurt me no more. And I'm preaching to somebody right now you still talking about that hurt you still talking about that pain you still talking about what they did what they said what went down and God is trying to heal you from your hurt yes he is 
You can't be healed from your hurt as long as you refuse to forgive. We, we talked in detail last week about bitterness, and we, we talked about bitter, bitterness. Is man, when I when I refuse, you want you want to know you want to know how how a person may be may be bitter. You may you may it's not you, just your cousin, because all of us say sanctify and take fry, all that. You love you love the Lord. You don't got no nothing in your heart by nobody's word. Just, just get this for your cousin. Get this for your cousin. Get this for get this for for mama them. Get this for mama them. A, a, a person is bitter. Listen to this when they refuse to forgive the offender. And have, listen to me closely, have unresolved anger. Anybody ever seen somebody? And out the blue, you went from zero, come on there, you went from zero to 99 all over again. Anybody been talking about something that hurt you, and now you, all of a sudden the water and started welling up in your eyes again, and now, and now you're like, <laughs> and you're like, what? My mama, what's wrong with you, mama? You're just like, nothing, baby. Go, go to bed. Leave me alone. Leave, can, can I that, that's some unresolved anger. And here, a, a person, let me, tell you, let me tell you a person, you can spot them out in your family. It's not y'all. You can spot them out. A, a person that's bitter, continue to replay the conversations in their mind. A person that's real bitter, they can have a whole conversation with you without you. You, you, not, you don't got to be there. They had a whole conversation about, oh, no, you know what you meant. You know what you said. You know exactly what they and that And you wonder how in the world they so mad by the time they see you because they've been talking to you all night. And all you did was say good morning and they just went all the way in. Where, where, where them saints at? They have a whole conversation with themselves to a person w w without the person and just, just mad. Dude, by that time, you don't even need to talk to them no more. You ain't got everything off your chest. You ain't got everything. Let me tell you how you know when your cousin's bitter. When they're easily offended. The slightest thing, especially from the individual. You want to see? We, we see this in marriage oftentimes. Do we have unresolved issues? Have an unresolved and here and you got to the place of where now all of a sudden your spouse wanna go on and talk about and all they all they said was, hey, you want you want some eggs or hey, you want some grits or hey, and then, don't, leave. don't be asking me about no eggs. Don't be asking me, uh, can I tell you, bro, she's not fussing at you about them eggs. Can I tell you she's he not he's he not mad at you because you burnt the grits again. That's not what he's mad about. Can I tell you it's some unresolved issues? Y'all just keep on, y'all just keep on. Come on, Twitter, come on, Twitter, come on, Twitter, come on, lean in, lean in, Twitter and the slightest thing is a, it gets you upset. And I have, I have to watch myself. I have to watch myself because we, 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 have, this we have to talk through things. And we have to examine because you could be mad at your spouse and they have no idea what's going on. And you just think, you just think they're, supposed to, hum, they're supposed to tap in and know, and know what's going on and know what's happening. And here, I mean, you haven't even told them that, what, what was going on. You got, Lord have mercy, let me keep on going here because here, here, here I can be bitter. And because of my bitterness, it could cause me to act out and respond. But we didn't see this in the life of Joseph. Joseph, read it when you get a chance. Joseph, he tests his brothers. J Joseph, I love this about him. God gives him some wisdom. He just didn't reveal himself all of a sudden who he was, but he began to test them. He gave them three different tests. He gave them a test of what I call a test of sincerity. Trying to see how sincere they were. You read it when you get a chance in Genesis chapter 42. He was trying to figure out how, where y'all come from. Who are you? What you trying to do? He knew who they were, but did not know who he was. They gave him a test of, uh, he gave him another test, uh, what I call a test of jealousy. Because when Benjamin finally came, he began to give Benjamin all these gifts and began to give him double portion, five more than what he gave everybody else. And why was he trying to test him in this way? I believe because, because Joseph used to be Benjamin. You are the with me, Miss Green. Joseph used to be Benjamin. That, that, that's, so they trying, he's trying to see, do y'all still treat him the way you used to, the way you used to treat me? Yo, Joseph, Joseph, Joseph tests him in the test of love because here yeah, you read it when you get a chance because Joseph, Joseph, he sent his brothers off and then he said, all right, you can't, we're going to keep Simon here and you can't get him till you come back. He said, when you come back, bring back Benjamin. And then when Benjamin came back, who's his little brother, he says, all right, what we, what we going to do, I'm going to keep Benjamin here with me and y'all can go back and tell, and tell your, tell your father what went on and what happened. And no, Ju Judah, Judah came back and began to plead in one of the most beautiful stories. Read it when you get a chance. Genesis 44, he comes and enters seeds for his brother and he says Joseph I can't let you he didn't know at the time he didn't know it was Joseph but he, he in the seeds he in the seeds and said I can't I can't let you keep Benjamin if we go back home without Benjamin it's gonna kill our father 
But Joseph was testing them. Read it when you get a chance. That's some good reading. Y'all cut the TV off sometimes read your Bible. I promise you get more. You get more. You get more. I promise you get more out of the story. You instead of just sitting there and looking like, when is, when is it over? When is it over? You know, read your Bible. You get more. So, 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 so here Joseph forgives. He tests them, but he forgives. What's the wisdom in this? The wisdom in this is, I can forgive you, but if you are still the same person that you always are, we don't got to get down like that. We don't got to get down like that. We don't get down. Here we go. Let me go. Good. We like that now. We like that, but let me, let me keep on going. Because genuine forgiveness, I'll be back for you directly. G genuine forgiveness is letting go of your desire to hurt the other person. This is it. It's your desire to hurt the other person. Simply put, forgiveness means, it literally means to cancel a debt. When, when you hurt me, now, now you, have, you have occurred a debt with me. When you hurt me, when you, when you, when you offend me, when you say something you shouldn't say, literally, I, I, I'm holding this against you. You can think of it, think of it as, as like a layaway plan. You, you, get, you give the people your stuff, and you go and you give them a down payment. And in order for you to get your stuff, you got to give them some more in order to get your stuff. And so when someone hurts me, when someone offends me, and I'm holding on to it, oh, I'm holding this, and I want you to come back and get it. I want you to come back and get it, and that shows up in many ways. That shows up in apologizing, changing your way, and all of that. But what forgiveness is, forgiveness is, don't worry about it. Forgiveness is canceling a debt. Jo Joseph brothers owed him. And with Joseph forgiving them, he's canceling the debt. Y'all, I know this is not exciting, and it's not, it's not something that's just going to make you push your neighbor and do cartwheels and somersaults and grab a hole to the ceiling fans and, and swim out of here. But no, can I tell you, but this is exactly what the doctor ordered. Because oftentimes, we want God to do something miraculous and supernatural in our lives, and we want God to give to us, but yet we're holding things against other people. But when I forgive somebody, I'm canceling the debt. And I'm saying, you know what? You don't owe me an apology. I'm I'm canceling the debt. You don't owe it. You don't got to make it up to me. I'm canceling the debt. You don't got to give me back my money. I'm canceling it to myself. Hold up now, preacher. Hold up now, preacher. I hear, I, I heard, I, I was clapping on everything else. Somebody said, I want my coins back now, preacher. Let me get out of here. <laughs> hold up, swole up. Listen. Look, 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 look. Look what this man of God said. Look, look, look. Human power alone. This is why we need God. Human power alone is not sufficient to reach full forgiveness. There is an element of forgiveness that is divine. It cannot be reached without God. Well, in other words, this is, why, this is why we have our lines that we draw. And we say, you know what? I'll forgive this, but I'm not going to forgive that. If they do it one more time. Anybody ever say that? You got one more time. You got one more time to do. You got one more time to say. And can I tell you, God fixes it the way that, that one more time comes. That one more time comes. And this is where the power of God comes in because you're going to need God to help you. There's a divine element for total forgiveness. You can make your mouth say anything. You can make your mouth say you forgive. But to get that thing out your heart for real, to get that anger out your heart for real, to get rid of that business for real, this one is going to need God. And you need God to be able to do this in your life. Look what Jojo did. Genesis 42, 9 says, And Joseph remembered the dreams. That they had dreamed of, uh, that, that he had dreamed of them. And he said to them, you are spies. You have come to see the nakedness of the land. Joseph remembered the dreams. What, what would you have done if you saw your brothers 20 some years later and the same dream that they threw you in the pit for? Oh, God allowed that thing to come to pass. And Joseph standing there in power and sees his brothers in weaknesses. And he remembers the dream. That's good news to all of us to let us know it don't matter how people embrace or how people help or how people encourage. If God has something for me to accomplish and something for me to do, it's going to happen with you and without you. you let me tell you about this evidence for elevation because oftentimes, man, we want this elevation. We want to go to this next place. We want God to use us mighty and miraculously. But th th you need some evidence for elevation. And Brother Jojo shows it to us. Evidence for elevation is seen. Look at it. When you acknowledge your part. Some of us are never wrong. 
No, that's not for y'all. This is for the next service. Next service. Next service. Some of y'all in the next service. Yeah. Y'all are never wrong. The way it, it gets to the place where every time something jumped off, it was somebody. Help me sideline preach. Somebody, I don't know who that was. Help me sideline. It was somebody else's fault. It was always them. It was always him. It's always her. And you never do anything wrong? There's two sides of this because here, oftentimes, God will not move me on or, or promote me whenever I can't acknowledge me. Oftentimes, we want God to do something in our lives and we can never see the part that we play. And I often, this is my favorite question. I don't care who calls or what goes on in counseling. I don't care. I always, I always say, well, you tell me about all this. And they just, and Pastor, they did it. And Pastor, they did that. And Pastor, this and that. And I, and I sit there and I listen and I'm absorbing and I'm taking notes and all that. But then, then I always ask this one question. Well, what happened right before all of that? I know you told me about all of this, and, and that happened, and, and they pulled out a, a Uzi and sprayed everybody, and, and all that. And you got, I, I got all of that. But what happened right before? And then all of a sudden, they're like, sir? Ain't no sir now. No, ain't, no, ain't no sir, huh? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You got any water? Ain't no, ain't no, 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 no. What happened right before that? <laughs> oh, boy, can I tell you? That we, we, and, and again, again, we have to always acknowledge our part. And even I, I try to lead this way. I don't care what kind of disagreement I have with individuals. I always, because I'm the leader, I always try to own some of it. And I could I could have given all the instructions. I could have been clear on what I was saying. But I said, you know what? I should have explained that better. You know what? I could have thought through that a little bit better. And I try to lead this way because I'm not always right. And anytime you position yourself, you're always right. You paint yourself in a the corner. Then whenever it is, you need some mercy you're never gonna get it let me get out of here y'all don't like this right here but that's okay ha. let me get out of here got to acknowledge your part here judah judah took his part here look at judah look at look at, look at genesis 42 21 look at this it says it says then then they said one to another this is when this is when joseph captured them they didn't know he they still don't know it's joseph then they said one to another in truth we were look at this look at it says in truth we are what what's that word say guilty concerning our brother they don't even know this their brother they said we're guilty concerning our brother in that we saw distress in his soul when he begged us they, they, as they lifted him out of that pit he begged them not to do this and then we would not listen to him that's why this distress has come upon us look at verse 22 and Reuben said to them he always got one of them always Reuben in the crowd I told y'all come on this is Reuben didn't I tell you didn't I tell you I, I told you I don't, want, I don't want to say I told you so but y'all wouldn't listen verse 23 they did not know that Joseph understood them, for there was an interpreter between them. So they're sitting there, isn't it amazing? They're sitting there talking about Joseph to Joseph. This brother got so much self-control. Some of us can't even think somebody talking about us. What you said? Call him. Nah, call him. Call him. He's standing right there, and he's still second in charge. Y'all missed it. They talking about him and he's still second in charge. <laughs> they, they talking about him and he's still in the place that God has there. So what if they talk about you? So what if they lie on you? So what if they don't like your hair? So what if they don't like your nails? So what if they don't like your poo? You don't like your... You know, so what? You still... <laughs> Who it is that God has made you to be. Some of us so petty. And we want to run Fortune 500 companies. And you all in your comments responding and say everybody on every little thing they saying. You don't sit your petty self down somewhere and let God be God and fight your battles. Come on here and stop running behind everything. They talking right to Joseph about Joseph and he didn't move. You got, you got to acknowledge your part. That was for somebody. That, that was your part right there. That was your part of the message. Acknowledge your part. Mr. I ain't never wrong. Mr. It's me against the world. Everybody hating on me. <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you, evidence for evidence for, for elevation. Come on, let me help you. Evidence for for elevation. Look at this. Is seen when you seek privacy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's good. It's good. Gen can, I, can I can I read the Bible? It's okay. Right. Okay. Genesis forty five one. Look what it says. Then Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood by him. 
This is when they brought back Benjamin and all this is like their, this is their third encounter and all of that. He couldn't control himself no more. The Bible says he cried. Look what he says. Make everyone go out from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. I, I don't know who this is for, but, but, but some of us, because we've been wronged and because we've been offended and because someone did this to us, we feel like everybody got to know about it. <laughs> Evidence for elevation seeks privacy. Joseph Second in charge, he didn't turn around to all of his people and say, you know what they did to me? He said, everybody get out. This is a family affair. Lord, Lord have mercy. Jo jo Joseph looked for some privacy. And I, and I think sometimes we, we, get to, we get to the place where we feel the need that we got to tell somebody. We get the need, we got to tell everybody. We got the need that we got to vent. And we got to tell people what's going on here and what's going on there. Oh, but no, can I tell you, privacy means that I'm releasing my right to keep on bringing this up. Lord have mercy. It's one thing for me to tell you that I'm offended. It's one thing for me to tell you that what went down between us. But then I got to go and tell everybody else about it. No, I don't got to keep bringing it up. I don't got to keep talking about it. What, no matter what group you in, no matter what season you in, you always talking about what they did. Nah, that people just need to know. I'm just being real. No, you're being real messy and you're being real petty right now. Leave it. Leave it alone. Y'all don't like that kind of stuff. Not the saints. We like to disguise it. Be in prayer. Be in prayer for pastor, you know. Being pre and prayerful. I feel like everybody has to know. Jo Joseph got, got some privacy. Listen to this. To forgive is to release your right concerning that offense. You're releasing your right. I'm telling these individuals. Joseph, I want you to think about this. I got to move quickly. I want you to think about this. Joseph has now, I told you, it was seven years of, of good, good, good times, right? Seven years. And now they're in the what year of the second part? In the first two years. So now Joseph has been in his position now. I'm not the sharpest knife in the draw, but I'm in the draw. Nine years. Isn't that nine? Seven plus two is nine, right? Thank you. I went to range. Can I tell you? Look. So, so it's nine years. And no one knows. It's not written. No one knows what Joseph's family did to him. Y'all miss what I just said. He's in this position for nine years. Not just, I'm not just talking about the fact that he was in prison. And all. I'm talking about the current position he's in. He's been in nine years. Y'all don't believe me? Look at Genesis. Just read the Bible. I can read, y'all. It's right here. Look, my, my baby can read. Look, Genesis 45, 16. Look, it said, when the report was heard in Pharaoh's house that, that Joseph's brothers have come, it pleased Pharaoh and his servants. Read it when you get a chance. I ain't get time to lift it all up. They had no idea what was going on. Joseph, Pharaoh, right-hand man, he have no idea what Joseph's brother did. I want to talk to somebody here. They got the need to tell everybody about what happened. You know how you're not healed? Because you keep on talking about it. You know how you're not delivered? You know how you can't get this evidence for elevation? You keep bringing it up again and again. And now listen to me. I got to say this because the Bible says in a multitude of counsel, their safety so you should seek counsel you should have individuals that you can talk to and you can share with and trust individuals but not everybody you need to have a spiritual leader a pastor somebody you can talk to somebody a friend a co-laborer somebody you can share with the way you can be able to vent with these individuals you vent up you don't vent down to these individuals about what's going on and but everything else don't need to be shared and i'm not talking about abuse i'm not and i say if you're in an abusive situation physical abuse mental abuse verbal abuse hear me clearly you need to tell somebody about what's going on i'm not talking about abuse but because you don't take out the trash Because you tired of all these Amazon boxes showing up in your house every day. She talking about she ain't got no money. All these Amazon boxes. Unless the UPS man giving it to her for free. I don't know what's going on. Is y'all got something going on? Because you ain't never got no money. But every time I come to the door, it's a box. I feel that right over. And Miss Vine did me. She said, don't do that, now, Pastor. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that, Pastor. 
You got to share everything. I told y'all about the brother, the brother I ran into in the barber shop. <laughs> Anytime they see the preacher, they always want to ask some kind, of, some kind of theological question. Say, Pastor, I'm tired of this. My wife don't never cook. What I need to do, I'm tired of eating cereal. I'm, I'm on work all day, 12 hours, come home. I'm hungry. And she talking about, go get you some cereal. I'm tired of eating these same cereal day in and day out. I said, my brother, go to this place called Walmart. They have a whole aisle of cereal. Come on, you get, you get cinnamon toast crunch and lucky charms. Come on, he get you some cream of wheat. You feeling frog? Get you some grits. Come on here. This is not the place in the barber shop to air your grievances about what your wife not doing, about what she, oh, come on here, ladies. Oh, come on here, brothers. Oh, come on here, people of God. We just air our dirty laundry to whoever listening. And sometimes people are listening for an opportunity. She said, what? I would never talk to you like that hard as you work. She don't appreciate you. You a good man. If I was your man, and you were my woman, ain't it? Her? <laughs> you don't know. Yes, you say it now. Look at <laughs> the Bible says. My point is, where's the privacy? Keep your mouth closed, people of God. Give it to the Lord. Talk to the individual and leave it alone. Lord, have mercy. Oh, the Bible says, let me get up out of here. Lord, it's getting thick in here. Can I tell you, did y'all cut the air off? Lord, it's getting hot. Can I tell you, look at Genesis 45 and 2. The Bible says, and Joseph wept aloud. Look at his brother in touch with his emotions. Joseph wept aloud so the Egyptians heard it and the household of Pharaoh heard They heard him crying. They didn't know what in the world was going on. So let me tell you, evidence for elevation is seen when I acknowledge, when, I not, when you acknowledge your part. Evidence of elevation is seen when you seek privacy. Look at this. Evidence for elevation is seen in your pursuing. Mm. Genesis 45 and 4. Look what it says. So Joseph said to his brothers, come, come near to me, please. He reveals himself to who, who, they, who he is. And look what he tells them. Come to me. Joseph calls his brother. Can you imagine what's going on in these brothers' mind? They think Joseph, they think Joseph dead. Now, I want you to think about this, because I thought about this when I was studying this. They never killed Joseph. They, they never killed him. But everywhere in the story, when they're rehearsing Joseph, they're saying, he's dead. They sold him. They, now, granted, they don't know what happened after they sold him, but, but you can tell a lie so long. They never killed this brother. But they telling everybody who will listen that he's dead, that he's dead. And I hear Joseph is talking to him and saying, I, I, I'm Joseph. He said, come. He said, come to me. And here, that's what I'm trying to tell somebody. You're never going to get the breakthrough that God desires for you to get as long as you're waiting on this individual to come to you. But Joseph said, come to me. Oh, can I tell you, evidence of elevation is seen in me pursuing. If you want things to change, if you want things to be better, if you want things to be different, every now and then you got to pursue reconciliation. You got to pursue it. Y'all ain't, y'all like this. Genuine forgiveness does not wait for the offender, the offender to repent. You just waiting on them to repent. I say, if they don't never say nothing, I ain't never saying nothing. If they don't never say, if they if they don't never say they sorry, I'll let it go. All they need to do is just say they sorry. Can I tell you, the devil can fix it that you'll never hear him say it. Just because that, that little thing holding on, right, they just need to repent. No, 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 no. Forgiveness has nothing to do with whether these people apologize or not. They don't owe you an apology. Let that go. Oh, no. They need to say, they're going to come back in my house and just start back fixing place like nothing never happened. And they'll never open up their mouth. Some people, that's their apology. They coming back around. They don't know how to say they sorry. They never going to say they sorry. But the fact they start showing back up and talking to you again, don't be sitting in the corner pouting, waiting on them to say they sorry. What is this elaborate speech and all that? Last time they said they were sorry, you said they were lying anyway. So if they tell you they sorry, they get their dog on. If they go on and apologize, they dog on. If they don't say nothing, they doggone. Just go on and love them anyway. <laughs> Preach, Pastor Kobe. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Yeah. Somebody pulled their heart out and just, they tried crocodile tears. Oh, baby, I'm sorry, baby. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You don't mean it. Look at you. You're lying, self. I see right through you. I know you. 
Man, they pouring his heart out and crying and just tell y'all, I didn't, I didn't or in, in, the, in the fellowship or at the job, I didn't see you. I promise I didn't see you. Oh, yeah, I ran my mouth. I shouldn't have did it. I'm so sorry. Hmm, you don't get me like that no more. Fool me once. I searched all over. I can't find that verse. I'm looking high and low. Still can't find that verse. That, ver that verse ain't in here, y'all. <laughs> Nobody owes you an apology. All right. <laughs> Genuine forgiveness does not depend on the person's actions. And it's not probationary. I'm going to forgive them when I see when they change. Oh, you God now. Oh, they got to bring forth fruit worthy of repentance for you. As soon as they change now, he come and heal that foolishness again. That's the first time. That, see, I told you. I told you. I, go, I, told, I told No, 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 no. Forgiveness has nothing to do. They're not on no probationary period. I forgive you when I get over it. You can't get over it if you keep talking about it, sweetheart. You haven't forgiven me because you keep holding on to your hurt like a safety blanket. You keep hanging on to your hurt because that's your crutch and you like going to the show go to. No, I said I was sorry. If we're going to stay here and work it together, you got to work and walk towards forgiveness. You can't stay over here in unforgiveness and just stay there forever. <laughs> Lord, the whole side of the church ain't saying nothing. They just looking. Let me say here. Let me get out of here. I'm losing all my little help in here. Let me get out of here. Let me get out of here. No one have mercy. Oh, Jesus. My, my, my phone ain't want to stay up here. He finna dip. He said, I'm out of here, man. Let me get up out of here. <laughs> Genesis 45, 15. Am y'all getting anything out of this? Am I messing y'all up? Okay, I think there's some good stuff right here. Joseph's brother, they never said a word. His brothers never said a word to him. He just showed them who he was. As people continue to show you who they are, why don't you show them who you are? No, 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 no. Exemplify Christ. Look at, look at Genesis 45, 15. Look what the Bible says. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. After that, his brothers talked. Now, in chapter 37, they couldn't say anything to him. Now, 20 some odd years later, they're weeping and crying and they're talking to him. Lord, have mercy. And some of us will not get to that place. Some of us will not be able to get that release because we're sitting there waiting on somebody to, to say they're sorry to us. Oh, but genuine forgiveness pursues. Genuine forgiveness. I'm not telling you to chase after somebody and all that. No, you need to put forth an effort because they're the one going on with their life. You the one got the problem. If you're trying to get this thing off of me, it don't got nothing to do with you and me no more. It got everything to do with me being right with God. Have nothing to do if you receive it if you keep ignoring me keep blocking me keep doing whatever you want to do but i'm gonna get this right with god Where, where's where's that group of people at i'm sorry man i'll try better next time this is why we don't this is why we, we got some roadblocks of forgiveness roadblocks for forgiveness sometimes we never seen we never have seen it modeled before i grew up in the house of where my mom was mad mom was mad for three weeks and nobody said nothing to mom leave alone leave me leave big mom alone i never saw a model Daddy didn't say nothing. Daddy can mess up royally, go off on you, tell you whatever, and he hang his hat on the fact, I'm daddy and I'm the man. Never apologize. That's not the right way to lead no house. That's not the right way to be the man just because you're the man. If you got to remind everybody every five seconds that you gorilla monsoon and you're the man, nine times out of ten, you're not. <laughs> Never saw a model. <laughs> Never acknowledge the fact that you offended. Where those deep folk at? Hurt who? I ain't hurt. Offended who? We never acknowledge the fact that we've been offended or we hurt. No, 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 no. Oh, oh look at this. Never wanting to offend the offender. Some of us, I, I don't want to tell them I, they hurt my feelings because that's going to hurt their feelings. Y'all will be, be surprised. Some of the stuff we be coming up with, I don't want to say nothing because maybe they ain't mean it. They ain't mean it. They know what they were saying. But then if, you, if that's your mindset, if you really believe that, then why you won't let it go? Somewhere down on the inside, you don't believe that, and that's why you don't. That's why you don't say anything. Lord have mercy. Not being forgiven yourself when you hurt someone. How many of us play those games? Because 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 they never forgave me. I went to somebody and told them I was sorry, and they told me I was lying. So I'm gonna make them feel what I felt. Oh man, I'm losing all my church. Here it is. 
feeling a sense of power by hanging on to unforgiveness. Sometimes, and I love this about Joseph, sometimes we like to see people squirm a little bit. When, when, they, when someone genuinely repents so they're genuinely sorry, sometimes we don't want to just outright just forgive them too fast because we want them to feel it a little bit. And that, it's that, that power that we like to kind of dangle over their head. That they, got, they got to dance our music and jump through our hoops. And what, but Joseph didn't do that. Joseph pursued forgiveness. Some of us, our relationships would be better if you, wouldn't let, if you would just let them be better. But you let, them, you let them stay tense and you let there be those problems there and, let, and never address the issues because you want this person to feel this little bit of pressure, a little bit of tension, not to hurt me no more, not to do this no more. But yet and still we serve a God and love a God who forgives us over and over and over and over again. I, I, can't, I can't do that. If I think there's an issue with me or someone, I'll quickly, not when I'm angry, I'll, wait till I cool off, I'll quickly go, hey, you know what, we good? What happened? Some, something, something happened. I, I, last time we conversated, we, didn't, we wasn't seeing eye to eye. I don't know. And I always put it on me. Maybe, 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 I take, maybe I'm taking it wrong. Maybe, maybe I'm in my feelings. But we just can't be serving with each other. And we can't be praising and working together and doing all that. And we got tension and issue. No, let's talk about this. And if, I don't, if I'm not going to talk about it, this is my rule. If I'm not going to address it, I got to leave it alone. If I'm not going to address it, I can't let it bother me no more. You can't have it both ways the way you don't address it. How about you not? confrontational but then you keep on dealing with it no you need to deal you need to deal with it let me get out of here Lord Jesus let me get out of here I'm, I'm, I'm almost out of time I'm almost out of time uh, evidence for elevation I'm trying to help you elevate you think that's cash closing cars no that's just forgiving them <laughs> evidence for elevation is in your deep sense of purpose I love this about Joe look what, look what Jojo said in verse 3 look what he says he has a deep sense of purpose he says I am Joseph Joseph knows who he is. I am Joseph. Joseph name mean the Lord adds. I am Joseph. You hurt me. I am jo You betrayed me. I am you threw me in the pit. I am. I'm trying to talk to somebody right here that where I don't allow my pain to define me. I don't allow what people did to me to define me. I don't allow what they said. And I'm not always going to get stuck in my past and stuck in that moment. No, I am who I am. I know my purpose. I know what God is doing in my life. And I'm not going to keep on hanging on to what happened. Oh, because when I hang on to what happened, I'm allowing it to thwart the purposes of God. Oh, but no, God has a purpose for me. That's bigger than my pain. God has a purpose for me that's bigger than my divorce. God has a purpose for me that's bigger than me being lied on and being mistreated. God has a purpose for me. Is there anybody here know that your purpose is much bigger than what you've gone through? Yeah. Let me get out of here. Look at, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. When, when you don't forgive someone, in some way that person is in jail. And you are the warden. You're, look at this, incarcerated too because you have to make sure the prisoner stays there that'll hit you Tuesday you holding on to your unforgiveness and don't even realize you're in bondage too. Oh, you're in pain too because you got to make sure they stay there. It takes more energy to stay mad with somebody than it is just to let it go. It takes much more energy to keep on remembering. And some of us, we went through some things. Lord have mercy. God knows I've been there before. I've been so upset with somebody. And then when I really sat down to think about what happened, I can't even remember the details anymore. All I know is they hurt me. All I know is they aggravated me. And here, it takes more energy to hold on to that than just to let it go. Oh, come on here, somebody. I'm trying to help you. Oh, to get to that place. Oh, the way you can deal with what you got to deal with. Evidence for elevation is seen in your soaking in the pain. What do I mean by soaking in the pain? Joseph says in Genesis 45 and 5, and now you, he said, and now do not be distressed or angry with yourself because you sold me here. Joseph is not, Joseph is not uh, overlooking the fact that they sold him. He said, no, you sold me. No, it happened. I'm going to face 
fix the problem. I'm going to face the offense. I'm going to deal with what went on. No, you sold me. I'm not going to just act like it never happened. I'm not going to act like I'm not upset about it. Joseph absorbed the pain. And so oftentimes, we never get over what we're going through because we don't absorb the pain. No, you are hurt. No, you are angry. No, your pride was offended. Oh, no, you were disrespected. Oh, no, you was. You were. You got talked to that way. Absorb the pain. And when you absorb the pain, God can deliver you from the pain. Let me go. I'm done. I'm just giving them to you. I'm done. I'm done. Here's the last thing. Last thing. I'm done. I love y'all. Last thing. Let me get up out of here. Let me go. Let me go give me something to eat. Let me get out of here. Because evidence for elevation, I'm done, is your sovereign perspective. It's this, it's how you know you're ready. You ready for elevation? When, 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 when you can acknowledge your part. Help me here. When, when, when you seek privacy. When you're pursuing it. When you absorb the pain. And we have a sovereign perspective. Genesis 45. 5. Look what Jojo say. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourself because you sold me here. Look what he says. For God sent me before you to preserve life. Y'all not helping me in here. Joseph has a sovereign perspective. He sees things the way that God sees them. Yeah, you sold me, Lord have mercy. You sold me, but God sent me, Lord have mercy. You tried to betray me, but God was working that thing together for my good. Oh, I'm talking about the providence of God. I told you last week about the providence of God, how God is behind the scenes, and God is moving the scenes behind the scene and it's the providence of God they got Joseph right where he's at I said it's the providence of God they got Joseph sold to the slavery it's the providence of God they got Joseph in the in the house of Potiphar it's the providence of God they got Joseph in prison right where he need to be and this is what Joseph said Joseph said you did this to me oh but God put me where I need to be at so I can be able to give him some glory and give him some honor I'm coming to help somebody today look at Genesis 45 and 7 it said and God sent me before you to preserve oh, to preserve for you a remnant on earth. Lord have mercy to keep you alive. Oh, then before your many survivors. In other words, Joseph said, you hurt me and you tried to kill me, but God kept me alive so I can keep you alive. God said, God, Joseph said, God help me so I can help you. Oh, somebody put your hands together. Give God some praise up in here. I'm so sorry, y'all. I'm getting ready to roll up out of here. But is there anybody in here that has evidence for elevation? Joseph said, I'm letting this mess go. Joseph said, God, let me go through what I went through so I can be able to get to the place that I can help you. Can I tell you that God left you where you are so he can be able to help somebody else? He wants you not to look down on other people. Don't keep people beneath your foot. Don't keep your thumb on people. But no, you got to let individuals go so God can get the glory out of your life can I tell you what Joseph said in Genesis 45 and 9 Joseph said hurry up and go get my daddy Joseph said I don't want to talk about this more he said go ahead on and get my father and bring my father this way let me let y'all in in the story I wish the story ended like this but no 17 years later Jacob died I said 17 years later Jacob came came down to Egypt and he end up dying and now because Jacob is dead look at Genesis 50 and 15 it said when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead they said it may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for the evil that we did to him y'all missed the point I said it was 17 years later for 17 years Joseph was good to them for 17 years Joseph fed them their children all of their livestock for 17 years they still don't believe Joseph they still think Joseph up to no good can I tell you that every now and then you just got to learn how to do you how to love God how to serve God it makes no difference if nobody believe you I'm a trust in the Lord until I die 
You don't ever got to think I can change. You don't ever got to know I'm sorry for real. You don't ever got to know I'm going to rebound. But the Lord is trying to do something in your life. Look at verse number 16. It says, so they sent a message to Joseph. They were so scared they didn't come to Joseph themselves. They sent a message to Joseph. Verse 17, they said that my father said before he died, please forgive the transgression of your brothers. Oh, but can I tell you, verse 18 said, for the brothers came and fell down to him. And they said, behold, you are, we are your servant. In other words, Jacob is gone. And now Joseph feels as if, feel as if everything is good. But the brothers still have something in their heart. But Joseph has forgiven them. And Joseph said, because they have a sovereign understanding. Because he understands that God is working it together. I let you go so God can let me go. I forgave you because I know God's hand is on my life. I heard Y'all ain't gonna help me preach in here I said I heard I heard Jacob say I heard Joseph say What you meant for evil The Lord turned it around And he's gonna make it Work together for my good Who could be our Ambrac said A bitter thing Cannot be made sweet The taste of anything Can be changed But poison not be changing in nectar y'all don't know when to get happy in other words a bitter thing cannot be made sweet so I'm not bitter so I'm not gonna pass bitterness to you because the Lord has touched me and made me sweet I heard one old song say he's sweet I know he's sweeter than honey on a honeycomb I heard I heard David say oh taste and see that the Lord is good he let me go because he got a sweet thing I got a sweet thing with him I'm a pass on sweetness to you you did me wrong but I'm not gonna render evil for evil you lied on me I'm not gonna lie on you you stab me in the back I'm not gonna stab it in the back but I got a sovereign perspective I heard if y'all want me to get done Help me close this message. Come on, stand on your feet and put your hands together. Look what the psalmist said in Psalm 105, 16. It said, when he summoned, he summoned a famine to the land and broke all the bread supply. Verse 17 said, he sent a man ahead of them. Joseph, who was sold as a slave. The Lord said, I need a famine. And I'm going to send a famine in the land. But I'm going to send somebody ahead. Can I tell you the Lord have chosen you to go ahead. You went in front of your family. He said, go ahead. You out in front. The Lord said, go ahead. Why I always got to be the bigger person? Why I always got to apologize? Why I always got to take the low road? Because the Lord has sent you ahead. Don't let nobody change you. That's because they mean, you don't start being mean. That's because they nasty, you don't start being nasty. Now I know why the Lord picked Joseph because of his heart because he knew if I give Joseph some power he won't crush his brothers now I know if I give Joseph if I pull him up he won't pull them down I heard I heard the psalm writer say in Psalm 105 19 I'm done y'all here's your word he said until he's had until what he had until what he had until what he had until what he had said came to pass the word of the Lord tested him Joseph was 17 years old and now 21 years later the Lord let him go through everything he went through because the word that was on the inside of him had to be tested I'm trying to find somebody in here how bad do you want that word how bad do you want that elevation how bad do you want to come out of what did you in? you got to stay in there until the word be tested you got to stay in there until God bring you out breakthrough is on the way deliverance is on the way I got evidence for elevation and I heard I said I heard I heard Jacob
Jacob say? Jacob say. Joseph say. Joseph said, I'm not in the place of God. What you meant for evil, the Lord turned it and worked it for good. Is there anybody in here that know that you know? You can cry all you want, but he's working it together. You can have pain in your heart, but he's working it together. All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. My purpose bigger than my pain. My purpose bigger than my tears. My purpose bigger than the chains. My purpose is working it together. Come on, give your God some praise. I said give him some praise. Evidence. Evidence, evidence. Father, we thank you for this picture of Joseph. What a powerful picture. As I study this and read this, tears come to my eyes when I see how you work through this Old Testament brother by the name of Joseph. And God, a lot of times we like to equate ourselves and say we're Joseph because of the favor. But God, every now and then, favor will look like failure. We cannot say that we're like Joseph just for the favor. But God, we got to be big enough to forgive. We got to be big enough to let some things go. We got to be big enough, God, to when people have wronged us and hurt us and offended us, we can be big enough to say, you know what? You still, didn't, you still didn't stop my purpose. You still didn't thwart the plan of God that God had on my life. So help us, Lord. Help us arise above. Arise above our pain. Help us have a sovereign perspective that you're working it together for our good. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't look good, but God, you're working it together for our good. Help us to let people go. And sometimes, God, we even, we, we even have an issue with you. Just like Mary and Martha, when you showed up at Lazarus' grave, they said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And sometimes that's our testimony. Lord, why didn't you come through for me? God, why didn't you heal? Why didn't you deliver? Why didn't you stop this from happening? But God, we have, to, we have to learn to say your will be done in our lives. And we will allow your will to be done in our lives. We will have our evidence for elevation. So help us all, Lord, to submit to your plan. To submit to your purposes. So your will can be done. Come on, sing it. every hand lifted Father there's no one in the sound of my voice that is exempt from pain every person in this room every person listening in the parking lot listening online all of us have been hurt but God we pray right now in the name of Jesus God to where we will we will mature in this area after we've heard this message today and after we've heard the previous messages help us to grow up in this area but never again God we will harbor anything in our heart towards somebody God it'll hurt we'll be offended things will happen but God with our hands lifted God we're going to make a, a bold declaration that God we're not going to hold anything against anybody we're going to let go of our petty indifferences we don't wanna, we're going to look for privacy we're not going to share all of our mess and all of our pain we're going to let it go help us Lord our hands are lifted we want to model you you said in your word they'll know that you're my disciples how you love one another 
Let there be love in truth and love ministries. Let there be love in our homes and love in our marriages and love in our relationships. And God, because we're body, because we're part of the body of Christ, let it be love on our jobs and, and love in our families. We lift our hands, God. Because we want to do better. We want to be like you on that cross. You said, forget them, for they know not what they do. So help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Come on, if you agree with that prayer, come on, put your hands together, give them some praise. Some glory and some honor. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe you're here and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't know Jesus, man. I don't want to rush past this moment. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, come on and meet us. If you're watching us online and you, you need some prayer, maybe you're backslidden, come on, call that number on the screen. Somebody said we'll pray with you. We'll love on you. And we'll help you do what you need to do. Let go. right now in the name of Jesus you know what she needs you know what she needs do it for her touch her body and just don't heal on the outside heal her from the inside out thank you for the work that you're doing in the life of sister early as she's yielded to you let your will be done let your purposes be done in and through her thank you for everybody and everything that's connected to her and we thank you in advance for the breakthrough for the deliverance right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Somebody put your hands together. Give God some praise. Oh, let, let God. God have it. In the name of Jesus. You know what she's looking for and longing for. We ask you to touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Oh, God, you are, you are our healer. You are our deliverer. And God, you are able, God, to take away every every hurt and every every ounce of pain, every shred of pain. You're able to do it. And God, we give it to you right now in the name of Jesus. Only you know what this woman of God is longing for and looking for. And we ask you to minister to her, God, according to the power that works in her right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your deliverance. Thank you for your healing. Thank you, God, for all that you said belongs us, that pertains to life and godliness. You've already given it to her. And we call her heal. We call her whole in the name of Jesus. Come on, the name of Jesus, let go. In the name of Jesus, touch her. From the crown of her head to the soul, to the soul of her feet. We ask you to touch her as only you can. We thank you for the healing. We thank you for the deliverance. We thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. Break every chain. Come on. Break every chain. Something, y'all. Come on. Power. There is power in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to touch her right now from the crown of her head to the soul of her feet. You know what she needs and what she's longing for. We ask you to heal her body. Thank you for all of the deliverance and all the things that you've done in her life. And now, right now, God, we ask you to do it again right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for healing. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your power. Right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Come on, y'all sing this song. Come on. Every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, 
So, Father, we thank you for breaking every chain. We thank you for destroying every yoke. I pray, God, there's someone here that needs prayer. I pray, God, that we will come forward and we'll do what we need to do, God, as even as we benedict this service. We thank you, God, for everyone, God, that is listening and everyone that is watching. We pray in the name of Jesus that your will and your purpose will be done in the life and the hearts of your people. We give you glory for forgiveness. We give you glory, God, for transformation. We give you glory, God, because you're breaking every chain and you're destroying every yoke. And we thank you, God, as we leave this place, never from your presence. We pray your angels go before us so we go to our various destination. We thank you for your anointing and your power and your favor. And we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You dismiss. to be free in order for someone else to be delivered pastor told us today that Joseph was a picture of Christ I can remember when I lied when I was in the room when I done things that wasn't right but the day I came to the Lord Jesus Christ the day I asked God to forgive me of my sins it was the day he forgave me of everything that I ever done in my life. How much more, how much more are you willing to forgive others that cause you pain in your life? That's the elevate, that's the evidence of our elevation. Come on, let's give God some praise for that. These announcements, let me give them to you real quick. We're asking everyone to wear masks. Even if you are fully vaccinated, join us. I call it Wonderful Wednesday, March the 2nd at 7 p.m. for our first Wednesday worship experience. Come on, somebody ought to give God some praise for that. School of Ministry is moving from Wednesday to Thursday. I knew they were going to find something to fill that Thursday in. School of Ministry is moving from Wednesday to Thursday, so join us Thursday at 7 p.m., either in person or via Zoom. As we learn more about how to study the Bible, contact us the last if you would like to sign up for the class and for the Zoom information. Due to the celebration of life at the church on next Saturday, we will not have open prayer on our own campus or our own campus giveaway. Stop by the TL store to purchase your I Love My Church t-shirt. TIL jerseys orders are due by next Sunday, March the 6th. Order forms are located at the Ask Me Anything table in the lobby, or a form can be emailed to you by contacting Karina at 904-514-9564. We are making progress with our expansion project, but we need some more. Keep bringing the money in. If given electronically, please be sure to select expansion project as your giving type. If given my cash, please use the blue envelopes. Giving statements are available. Please sign up at the Ask Me Anything table. So join us in the forget. Remember, next Sunday will be our Holy Communion. Session one of our March New Members Connection class.
we'll be next Sunday at 8.30 p.m. Those are our announcements for this week. Get ready to go. I wish you would repeat after me. Do this for me. Repeat this after me, and we're going to be out of here. Everybody on their feet, if you can rise on your feet, please do so. Repeat after me what I say unto one. Hey, y'all ain't do that too good. Can we good to do that again? What I say unto one. I say unto all. Watch, pray, love the Lord, and your neighbor too. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember, don't be discouraged, but be encouraged. God bless you. On behalf of everyone at Truth and Love Ministries, we want to thank you for joining us for our virtual worship experience. We want to thank you for your likes and your shares, your comments and your emojis. But we also want to invite you to partner with us as we continue to be the hands and the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. You do know that he told us that we ought to feed the hungry, we ought to clothe the naked, and we ought to be the church. And you can help us to continue to do just that through your generosity. And there are three easy, safe, and secure ways that you can do just that. You can text the word T-I-L-JAX, one word, T-I-L-JAX, to the number 77977. You can go to our website, www.truthandlove.tv, or you can go to the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, search for Truth and Love Jax, download our app, and you can give that way. We thank you for your participation. We thank you for your generosity, and we love you, and we'll see you next time. Here comes the church. God bless you.